Hello, believers, non-believers, and everyone in between. You're listening to Stories with Sapphire. I am Sapphire Sandalo. Now get cozy and open your mind because it's story time. I grew up in Manila, uh, in Paranaque City, and then um, six years ago I moved to Denmark. And uh, my relationship with the paranormal is, uh, well, it's complicated. This is Ian Santa Maria, author and senior concept artist at Lego. I first learned of Ian's beautiful work from an illustration I saw on Instagram. Seeing that he had a passion for Filipino mythology, I messaged him and asked if he had any paranormal stories of his own he'd like to share. And he sure did. Ian was so captivating throughout our entire call, and I'm even convinced that we encountered some interdimensional interference. This story has quickly become one of my all-time favorites. I hope you enjoy. And whatever you do, do not repeat the entity's name. Um, First off, I am an author and an artist of topics that are very Filipino mythology based. And at the same time, I'm also a skeptic about what we call the paranormal. And at the same time, I've uh, experienced what some might say, you know, weird stuff which led me to what I am doing today, which, uh, you know, the reason why I am into Filipino mythology is because of this experience that I had when I was younger. It, I think everything started when I was in high school. So this was back in the eighties. So, so I grew up in a very old house in Paranaque, in Paranaque city. And it's a type where my great grandparents built and then it was just refurbished and um, remade through every generation, but it's still the same foundations. It's this very old house. And it started off with a lot of trees around it. I have to paint a picture first. So it, it was very dense, a lot of trees. Uh, there wasn't many houses back then and a lot of grass, a lot of very long grass around our house and kamyas trees, if you're familiar with kamyas trees. Kamyas is this green, um, very sour fruit. Yeah, I don't know if it's a fruit or a vegetable. Not, nah, it's a fruit, right? It's a fruit and it's very sour. And then we had this uh, like a four foot tall kamyas tree in front of the of the garden. And I'm, I'm just setting the stage so that you can imagine a house with this tree in front and it's a singular tree and everything outside the gate is like big balete trees already and um, we would experience weird stuff that goes around the house and it happened to mostly the people around me at first so my mom my sister my friends i never really experienced it firsthand at first it just started with with moving stuff Books on a shelf, one by one, falling down. They were big, heavy, those Britannica encyclopedia books. That's what I saw. But what my my sister and my friends would describe, uh, my, my sister at one point opened a cabinet and um, uh, the cases, eyeglass cases that were on on the cabinet felt like it was thrown at her from, from a low angle, like it, it was flying up to her face. My mom, my mom felt her hand being slapped when she would open a door, like stuff like that, stuff like that. But the only thing I experienced were the books and uh, the simple, uh, simple things like moving chairs, um, moving cups on the table, cupboards opening and closing. I think it happened for a whole year. It came to a point that um, um, two of our helpers resigned. <laughs> And the, the helper's room was exactly in front of the water tank. And no one would sleep there. And this, the helpers just started to sleep in our living room. 
at night because they for some reason the 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 water tank area where the small rooms were for the helpers were they, it kind of freaked them out so it became like a storage area but i i never believed it i was so skeptical about it because it never i never really experienced it on my own it was really my friends would tell, tell me ian hey dude the the doors kept on swinging open um my mom would say ian did you hear the doorknobs last night all the doorknobs were trying to turn all at the same time i was i was asleep i, I never really experienced this so it came to a point my mom got kind of fed up with all of the things that are happening at home so she decided to have a seance and hire a seer and i was really so skeptical about it at first and i was like ah sure sure let's sure let's do this because i really want to see this as well ian's mom knew a seer through a mutual friend his name was edward and he was nothing like what ian was expecting at all Oh, he was just a couple of years older than me. He was young. I, I was in high school and he was already graduating from college. And he had this gift. And he didn't even ask for payment. And uh, which, you know, we were so used to having, you know, Albularios or Sears coming over, but who would ask for money afterwards? But he was like, no, 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 let's do this. Um, I, I don't need payment for this. So, okay. And then. There wasn't even anything special. Like uh, I was expecting the use of a uh, tawas, the wax in the water thing with the candles. So I was expecting more like of the old school um, seance type um, rituals that were going to happen. But no, um, the seer, he actually said, no, 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 it's a, this is going to be simple. Um, let's just all sit around in the living room and let me walk around the house. And I'm like, okay, sure, you walk around the house alone. I'm gonna follow you. So, cause I don't know, I, I wanted to see if he was like putting stuff around the house as well. So I, he did allow me to follow him around the house. And while that was happening, we were walking around the house. It was me and him and my sister and the group of friends that was in the living room, one of them screamed and actually ran out of the house. Um, her name's Charisse and like, Oh, Sharice, what happened? What happened? And she's like, she saw a face turn around the corner and look at her. And and I, we were like, oh, really? A face? And it was not just a face of a human. She described the face as being a huge face, like a giant's face uh, that, that turned around the, the corner and looked at her. And okay, I'm uh, just telling the, <laughs> just going back to the stories now. It's been a while since I told this story. And I was actually laughing. Some of my friends were laughing. And then that is not, then that is so ridiculous. We, we, we didn't know what, how to make of it and what to make of it. And, and then the, the seer, Edward, would say, Oh, that's fine. That's fine. Let's just go on. And he wasn't even, even saying a prayer or chanting or anything. He was just, just literally walking around the house, just looking left and right. I was starting to get bored. <laughs> He started to think that maybe someone had spoken to Edward before the ritual, that this was all staged. Pre-planned. In my head. In my head. But then uh, this year, he asked me, uh, Ian, did you have a tree cut down from this area? And he was actually pointing to where the Kamya Street used to stand. And it was now part of the parking garage. And that was, and th this was during my grade school years. And I was already like, uh, I think I was fourth year high school going to college at the time already. So, okay, this is more than um, eight years ago. Um, and I'm still, again, I'm thinking, uh, you know, his, uh, his aunts or, you know, his mom would have known maybe. And then he said, um, okay, these aren't, these aren't ghosts. And he, for the first time I heard the term Laman Lupa, According to Edward, the Laman Lupa are creatures that lived on the land many years before Ian's house was built. They were small, with hairless skin that was dark brown and oily. They were the minions of a much larger, troll-like creature. And since Ian's family had built their home on their land, the Laman Lupa had no choice but to live with them. 
and again you know this made me smirk this made me laugh a little bit I'm like sure man okay sure sure naman lupa okay but they aren't dead people just to be sure they, these are these aren't like spirits of people who used to be alive that are just bothering us and then he said with conviction no this is laman lupa and he has a tribe and he said he he has a tribe he used to live uh, in the kamyastri peacefully and he was able to work around you guys living here but then since you cut it down they moved to your water tank in the back of the house and I'm like, what <laughs> what are you talking about <laughs> I mean like the water tank water tank where we get our drinking water from and then he said yeah 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 he they, he lives there with his tribe of Laman Lupa and he did say you're an artist right so uh, go grab a piece of paper and let me describe it to you and sure and um, at first I'm like okay this is like the, the Capre stuff because I, I thought those guys lived in trees and he looked at me and he said no no this is different okay and he described it to me um, it was a huge giant like man who had hair all over almost as black as a gorilla who had a very long um, chin huge ears and very long arms and then he told me his name okay so I drew the creature and he, he told me the name and I still was so very skeptical about it because we, we were all laughing about it at, at the same time we were I remember we actually opened a few beers as well while the whole thing was happening and no one was really taking the seer seriously so my friend uh, Vincent my best friend he went in Tagalog if you're real show yourself and all of a sudden the, the door where the the, the, the entrance to where uh, you go to our water tank it kept on slamming back and forth and I was like holy sh holy sh okay dude somebody better check that out because I don't know if it was rigged by this guy so we're trying to look at it if it was rigged and then Edward he said okay uh, he's angry now he might follow you for a very long time Ian what does that mean he might follow me for a very long time he might follow you for a very long time you have to remember that the mortal plane is very different from what they perceive as their own mortal plane to them we are the visitors and quote unquote ghosts so we kind of bother them it's just that they learn to live around us and that's the way he explained it to me and he told me to never use or tell anyone the name that he has given me after Edward left the activity in Ian's home had quieted down. It felt as if everything was back to normal. And then, after a month passed, they got a call from Edward. His daughter had fallen seriously ill. For quite a while now, and he thinks that was the price that he had to pay for us intruding on this creature's um, privacy. And he kind of claimed that Okay, you might, the, 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 the house, that your, your place might be quiet for a while because um, I think some of his uh, kampon, the, the term he used was kampon, his uh, minions might have followed me at home and they were causing my daughter this uh, unexplainable fever. And then he said, okay, I can, I can deal with this, Edward said, the series. Said, I can deal with this, I am used to this. Don't worry. And just remember to keep his name private. That's just between you and me. Okay. Okay. I said, okay. And then cut to, I was already in college. And I met, you know, a few like-minded people who were into the paranormal, the, the cult, and who made comic books about them. And we started writing comic books about it. I don't know if you're familiar with the Netflix show Trece, the anime Trece. So I, that's where I met the creators of Trece during college. You know, we, we were talking about ghosts and Filipino creatures and spirits and um, Laman Lupa, quote unquote. And when we started working, so everything was really quiet already. When we started working, I used the name of the creature in a comic book. And in my head, that's nothing. Let's, let's go ahead and use it. What's the first that could happen, happen right? 
And then famous last words, no? So... <laughs> The story continues after the break. And now, the story continues. When we left Ian, he was telling us about his decision to use the name of the creature in one of his comic books, despite the fact that Edward the Seer had warned him not to. So I said, let's use the name. Let's use the name. We, we, we got an idea for this comic book where uh, Tikbalang is out there hunting Aswang and Laman Lupa. And one of the bad guys... Is this creature named Blank? Okay, uh, let's do that. My writer agreed, and we made a story about it. By then, we moved out of the house, the old house, and and we were in a new house, still in Paranaque. But we moved to a new house, so you know, in my head, how could this bother us here now? I mean, it's been a while. I I don't think this will ever come up again. But then it did. Um, for some reason. Every time my writer would use my PC with the name of that creature there, uh, my PC would crash. It would crash all the time. And we, it, the script never got printed. It won't print. Ian ended up losing a lot of money due to this issue. He repeatedly had to bring his computer in to be fixed and examined. He even tried building his own computer to make sure every part was in working order. No, but every time I know I noticed that every time the name was on that file, everything in that file would be corrupted. And every, I started drawing digitally already, and and then I decided, okay, I'm gonna do this old school. I'm gonna draw this traditionally, and I'm gonna scan the pages at my office. I was already working then. Maybe that will work things out. Uh, but every time we'd bring the file via USB to the office, it was always corrupted. And then weird things started happening in our new house. Um, we had an old uh, mango tree that uh, would curve over the uh, over our swimming pool in, in the new house. And the mango fruits that would fall into the pool were always rotten and it smelled so bad with the chlorine in the pool. And for some reason, there was always dead uh, Maya birds in the, what do you call this? Uh, in the railings of the roof on the side. There were dead Maya birds. And uh, the explanation of our neighbors back then is was, ah, they have been probably eating the, you know, the rotten fruit. We just thought, it was very weird. And then the energy of the house suddenly became very negative. Uh, my mom and I would fight a lot. My sister and I would fight a lot. And it was so negative all the time. Up until we met with Edward again. Okay, we met with Edward again. It was through a party. It was a, it was a social gathering. It wasn't even a seance. It was just like, oh, Edward, how are you been doing? Um, okay, so, so I used the name in a comic book. <laughs> and he's like, what? Ian, I did tell you never to use the name, right? So, oh, I don't think it's connected to that, man. And I'm like, I said, that's the last thing you should have done, man. And we paid the price. My, my daughter paid the price for that already. And now you, you woke him up, quote unquote, woke him up. And woke him up? Was he asleep? I don't understand. I really don't understand what's going on. And he said, Dad, it, okay, it's hard to understand, but I mean, Ian, just, what have you got to lose? Just, just don't use the name. Okay, okay, fine, fine, I'll drop it. So, we erased the name. My writer was kind of pissed about it. He was like, dude, but I like the name, and it's real. Yeah, just, just change it. He changed the name on the same file we printed out the first time. And it printed out, and I said, this is so weird, and I'm like, dude, this can't be happening, come on. And then all the files suddenly uncorrupted. And I'm like, oh, the, the old files from a zip drive. Do you remember what a zip drive is? A zip disk. I said, that old plastic giant floppy disk, it worked. And it, we, uh, back then, it, it didn't. And our IT guy in the office was just uh, blaming it to, you know, old, uh, old hardware. He's like, ah, maybe your zip drive back then was could be a problem with working parts. 
because it wasn't SSD back then. It was, you know, a zip drive had a lot of rotors and moving parts inside. And he said, that ah, could have been rust. could have been a lot of things. Okay, sure, 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 sure. Let's do that. Ian changed the creature's name in the comic book, and it was finally able to be successfully finished and printed. Around two or three years later, another exorcism was performed on his house because his mom still felt so negatively. This time with a Catholic priest. So my mom was like, okay, we're going to do this combo thing, like a Catholic priest plus somebody who was like Edward. But um, it was an old lady who used uh, tarot cards. And uh, I'm not familiar with tarot cards at all. I love the art and the cards. I don't know how to use them. I don't know what they mean. So this old lady just started doing her thing on the table. And weirdly enough, she turned to me and said, you're an artist, right? Do you want me to describe him to you? And it felt so reminiscent of how Edward and I um, first met. And uh, right there during the session, the, the, the priest kept on saying the Holy Rosary while this um, old lady asked me if I wanted to draw the creature that she saw in her head. And it was the exact same. It was the exact same description. While I was drawing it, the, the thing that got me is he has a very long chin. But she, excuse me, po, uh, ano po mana? In, in Tagalog, yes, I Ah, ba, ba, ba. It, very long chin. And then she was, uh, this old lady says, chin, long, long, very long. Oh, okay. Big ears, big ears. And I said, like, holy crap. And I'm drawing, this is exactly the same thing that it was already 2000s. Huh? I drew this guy back in the 80s. And this uh, old lady had no connection to Edward whatsoever. Okay, it followed us here. Because, and the only reason I could think of was, ah, maybe because I did use his name. And I was, <laughs> what else could it have been? And then my writer back then, Mervyn, he was my writer, he's like, dude, this is so awesome, I want to use his name again. <laughs> that wasn't even the end of it. So when the comic book, uh, when we finally found publishers for a comic book, um, my old... Uh, professor in UP in the university released a book on Filipino mythology and the occult called The Soul Book um, written by uh, Francisco Dimetrio and the artist was my prof <clears throat> and then Bajitan, the creator of Trese, he said Ian yeah, you should read this The Soul Book it's amazing it describes all kinds of creatures in Filipino mythology okay cool and I was browsing through it. There was one segment there that described that exact same creature that I was drawing through the years. Well, and it had a very long chin, large ears, hair as black as the night, um, arms that drooped and scraped on the floor while it walked. And it is known to be a very violent and negative creature. And, and it's called a. Oh, freaking A. Sapphire? No joke. The second that Ian said the creature's name, our video call was disconnected. It freaked me out, but it also made me laugh because, of course, the call was disconnected. Names hold a lot of power in magic. It is literally a summoning spell, just like how your attention is grabbed when someone says your name. So to prevent us all from accidentally summoning this creature, I have censored the name. It's extra creepy that this happened when you consider that Ian was in Denmark, nowhere near his old home in the Philippines. Hello. Okay, that kind of freaked me out a bit. <laughs> my, my girlfriend actually said, stop mentioning me. <laughs> Before Ian left Manila, he met up with Edward. Uh, we did talk about it, and we had a few laughs over a few beers. And he did say, uh, Ian, it, I, I cannot even start to, dis to explain to you how this whole thing works. 
he said he just he was just born with this thing where he could see other things and he couldn't even explain it and that sometimes it even bothers him and he just learned how to live with it and then uh, yeah he's still in, he's still in Manila in Paranaque Ian is still trying to make sense of this whole experience and how Edward was able to know about this creature maybe maybe um <clears throat> Edward's parents or people he grew up with talked about the lore, this old Filipino lore already, and they knew what it was called. And maybe that's how uh, the name or how what it was called or how it was described got some traction. You know, and it, it's just it's just this thing that our ancestors talked about, and it was just ingrained in our memories as a, you know as the myth. So that's how I'm trying to make sense of this when I saw it, when I read it in the book. Maybe it was talked about before and Edward wasn't really aware of it and that he just kept it in his mind. Other than that, I, I still really, I really don't know. I, I still try to write about stories of, of, the, of Filipino mythology. And now I am very conscious with names. So in interviews, uh, um, there was this time we, we, we lived with an Ifugao tribe up in Baguio, and the elders would tell stories of, you know, the same ghost stories of their old creatures, and they had names for them. And I said, I'm not, I'm not using any of those names ever again. Just tell me, like, in general, what, what the general gist of the story. I don't need to know the name. Yeah, and then uh, that's how, you know, everything got me interested in, in Filipino folklore. I'm just a bit more sensitive. <laughs>